All right, gang, math uh, 6100. Uh, on the left part of the screen, I have the write-up. Uh, the, the purpose of this would be to uh, examine mean GRE across uh, admit status. Uh, admit status. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and look at it. Uh, we haven't looked at it previously. So it looks like uh, 273 no's and 127 yeses. Uh, and I think this would be an interesting study in a sense. Yeah, you know, my daughters are uh, uh, seniors in high school right now, and they're uh, applying to colleges. In fact, we're we're smack dab in the middle of all the drama. <clears throat> and, um, you know, they're, they're talking about test optional. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I wonder uh, how test optional that some of these schools really are. But uh, so that may be a motivation for a study of uh, this nature. So anyway... Uh, let's, uh, here's what I would do. I'll go through this, uh, line by line, just like, uh, I did previously. Let me get this over so I don't, uh, lose my mind here. Uh, so we're, uh, two sample t-test examined, uh, the, uh, I would just say, actually, I wouldn't say that. I would just say examined, uh, the, the mean difference in GREs across admit status, uh, accepted or not accepted. Uh, priori power analysis conducted using power G power 3.1. Uh, the results indicate uh, uh, that to achieve a desired power of 0.80, the sample size of 222 subjects is needed. Therefore, adequate power is not a concern because we have 400. Let me show you how I got that. Um, so if I go to G power and open it up, uh, what I would go to again we're uh, residing in t-test, you know, we go to the difference of independent means. Uh, we're doing a two-tail test. Uh, the effect size. Uh, so we need effect size for Cohen's D, don't we? Uh, okay, interesting. Um, all right, so we're going to have to do a little bit of work. Uh, I think the easiest way to get Cohen's D for um, uh, an independent samples t-test is just use, uh, the, we can use the test statistic T, but that gives us R. And you can see here that um, G power for some reason is wanting Cohen's D, so we can't, we can't use the square root of T square over T square plus the degrees of freedom as I uh, provided in the previous video because um, uh, we it's not the same as uh, uh, effect size D. Now when we categorize them they'll be the same but uh, not the same value. So I think the easiest way to do this is um, uh, let's use the Cohen's D command. Um, Alright let me pump the brakes a little bit. First thing we have to do is we have to get uh, uh, install a package and I've used this previously so I'm not going to uh, install the package because again it'd be redundant, it's already been installed. But you probably don't have it installed, so you'll need to run this and um, you know select Ohio and uh, go through all the, uh, the things needed to install the package. Now once it's installed, even if you access it later, all you have to do is just uh, access the library and um, then we can use it. So what we'll do here is uh, we will use uh, name the data set and then there's um, if I can remember this um, it's pretty straightforward I think yeah and then I want to uh, look at GRE over uh, admit and then uh, variance equal uh, I want to not assume that, so we have false. Again, I'm not a fan of pooled t-test. I'm a fan of unpooled t-test where we don't assume equal variances. Now, <clears throat> what we get here is we get an effect size of uh, 0.407, uh, which actually is a magnitude that is small. Uh, so I need uh, to restate this down here, down a small f uh, with uh, d equal uh, 0.41. And again, the negative is irrelevant. That's uh, 
just uh, the ordering of which admit. If we had admit uh, yes first, they would give us a positive. So it's uh, all right. Let's uh, let's jump into G power. So our effect size D is 0 0.407. Uh, type 1 error rate 0.05, we want to look at uh, power of 0.80, and we need an allocation ratio of N2 to N1. So what I need there is I need uh, 273 uh, divided by 127. So 2.15, uh, does that work for everyone? And uh, calculate, and I'll see I get uh, 222 as the desired sample size to create uh, 0 0.8. Yeah, I've got a, a larger sample uh, than that, so uh, I may be creating, um, I'm definitely working with more power. So that whole practical significance, statistical significance uh, is a concern to me. Now, some of you may be wondering, and, and I, I would have wondered this if, if I were in your all's shoes, uh, what would be what would happen if I went 127 over 273? Uh, in other words, what's th this says N1 and N2, but uh, is that something we can rely on? Uh, so if I come in here with uh, 0 0.465, uh, you're going to see that I get the same sample size of 222 to get the achieved power of 80% uh, or probability of 0 0.80. All right. So, uh, next thing, I close the first uh, paragraph uh, with a box plot of GRE, side-by-side uh, -side box plot. And surprisingly, what I look at is I look at the dark lines in the middle. Uh, the median is slightly higher than the, uh, for yes, is slightly higher than uh, the median for no's. Uh, the variance, standard deviation are pretty similar. Standard deviation is going to be higher for no because there's more variability. Now the next thing we do, I uh, come in and say since the samples were collected randomly from each population, independence uh, may be assumed. So I'm getting into testing the assumptions. Uh, however, the results from the Shapiro-Wilk indicate possible threats to the normality assumption. Uh, let me show you how I do uh, Shapiro-Wilk. Um, I use the by function and I put my quantitative first and then I put my admit second. And uh, in general, I can put any function here and it will present the results over GRE, well, of GRE over admit status. So I'll get two results. For example, let's just do this. Uh, I'm gonna use this later. Uh, if I want the mean, uh, you can see that I reported the means uh, right here in the next paragraph. If I hit my up arrow, uh, I can get that again, just put in the standard deviation, and you can see that I get the standard deviations that were reported. I can also, very conveniently, uh, get the Shapiro test. So the Shapiro test, uh, again, the null hypothesis for the Shapiro test is the data appear to come from a distribution from a, a population that is normally distributed. Uh, I reject that in both cases. So I report that, right? Uh, not accepted. Uh, has a, uh, a test statistic of 0.99, uh, significant at the 0.05 level. Accepted uh, test statistic 0.98, uh, significant at the 0.05 level. I don't throw the baby out the bathwater here. I just report it and go on. Uh, you'll find out if you, you do this stuff long enough that the normality assumption being threatened or violated is not a huge deal. Uh, is our p-value perfectly stable from our independent samples t-test? No, but it's not going to uh, vary uh, much. Next thing I do, the results from the Levine's test indicated no concern with equal variance. So what I would do here is I would run Levine's test, uh, but remember with Levine's test, I have to um, uh, install a package called Lawstat. Uh, so I've already installed the package. Again, so I don't have to go through the install packages. You probably will. 
right? And again, that has to be in uh, quotation. All I need to do is just access the library. All right, once I do that, I can uh, implement the uh, Shapiro test. Or, I'm sorry, the Levine test. So I'm going to just, uh, I can remember how to do this. Uh, a lot of these things follow. Uh, yes. OK, so this allows me to, uh, to carry out the Levine test, which again, the null hypothesis is the uh, variance for population one is the same thing as the variance for population number two. Uh, this location just centers the result. If I'm doing some sort of non-parametric thing, I may want to um, uh, use the median. Well, really, I, that's not true either. Uh, if I was doing non-parametric, I wouldn't be using this. Uh, if I had a severely skewed distribution, maybe I'd want to uh, use the median. So um, here, um, uh, you know, it's uh, used, uh, huh, I've never seen that before, none, not apply because the location is not set to the median. Uh, I don't know, let's just see what would have happened if we had set this uh, equal to the median. A uh, little less power, right? Uh, so again, I always set it equal to the mean because, um, because I do. All right. Uh, so uh, the test statistic, uh, 0.63, this is reported right here, p-value 0.43, so again, no concerns with violating the equal variance assumption. All right, gang, time to get in and actually run the t-test. So I've already shown you in this um, right here, I've shown you how to calculate the mean and standard deviation of GRE separated into admit status. So now I just have to run the independent samples t-test. Uh, and I want uh, uh, equal variance. Uh, how was variance equal, right? Uh, yeah. Equal false. So this will run uh, the Welch. Um, Oh, I'll see what I did. All right, uh, so we have uh, variance. Uh, we're running an unpooled t-test. And you can see that an unpooled t-test, again, has the characteristic that the degrees of freedom are not uh, an integer. So I've reported that. Uh, I reported that t. Uh, again, I always italicize that because we're using the t-distribution, so that's... Uh, uh, the um, significance of that, 260.18 uh, degrees of freedom, always must be reported. The negative 3.83 uh, is your test statistic given from the output. And notice that I s reported the significance level appropriately. Now, the confidence interval runs negative negative, which again tells me that we have statistical significance with mu1 uh, less than mu2, which is kind of represented by the group means, right? Uh, so small effect uh, size, again, let's go back to the effect. Uh, I did that early on, right? Yeah. So we have a small effect at uh, 0.41. So it's pretty, uh, very thoroughly uh, describes uh, what we would have done and how we would re would report independent samples t-test. I have to get I have to tell you that you know I've taught 6610 a lot of times and I get really frustrated with the very first assignment because I kind of turn students historically I've turned students loose and let them you know I'll give them a problem like this and uh, and ask them to carry out an independent samples t-test and to summarize it in a paragraph or two. And I don't get what I want. And uh, it dawned on me, uh, I can't believe it took this long, but it dawned on me, I guess, last year that you're not getting what you want because you haven't taught them what you want. So teach them, and then if they don't uh, give you 
what you want. And you know that's when uh, we deduct points. Uh, but uh, and again, there's nothing that you know that says this is the the only way this can be written up. You know, not even not at all. You could have someone else with the same experience as me write this up and 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 have some uh, some differences. But uh, the main things that are reported, uh, you know, the statistical results. The descriptive statistics, uh, the assumptions, uh, doing a power, power analysis, you know, those things would or at least should be uh, consistent. All right, uh, I'll tell you what, I have another data set, and let me see if I can find it and drag it uh, over here, and I think it's just called SAT Gender. So I want to, I'm just going to call this new data. So what's going on here? Uh, yeah, this is not what I want. Uh, this is actually the way it should be. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll put up a, a very, very quick video. I'll find the file that I want and put up a quick video uh, after this one. All right, sorry about that. Take care.